And like I said, what I've seen thus far is that most of this map is plains, and therefore there will not be uh, ability to grow our cities at a particularly alarming pace. We're really cracking on with writing. Unfortunately, I have the difficulty on... Let's go into settings. Level 5, King difficulty. On King difficulty, the AI starts with pottery as a technology. It can also research technologies much more quickly than the uh, player, because they are cheaper. Um, and all in all, this means that at the start of the game, the human player tends to get left behind a bit. That's why we're going for writing immediately, so we can boost our science. I'll explain more about this when we get to it. For now, we're just going to keep looking at the land. We've still not found anything of particular note to us, but hopefully we'll get back round to our capital soon. Warsaw can fire on an enemy. What does this mean? It means the Barbarian has come nearby. We don't have to worry too much though, because Barbarians in isolation are not very powerful. The Barbarian Brute is just a warrior in disguise, it's just got a different decal. So we don't have to worry very much about it, it's not very dangerous. It's the worst unit in the game. Did you see that? That Barbarian encampment here has just spawned a new Barbarian unit. We're not too interested in taking it on though, so we're going to try and ignore it as much as possible. And just have Warsaw continue firing at the warrior. Luckily in this game, unlike in Civilization 4, cities can actually defend themselves to a certain degree. In Civilization 4, all the Barbarian had to do was walk over your city's capital's, uh, you know, city space and bobs your teapot, your city's been burned to the floor. In this case, we don't have to worry. We're just going to keep walking. Like so. This is a very pressed shaped map. I did not choose for it specifically to be like that. It doesn't look very naturally formed, put it that way. There is some grassland over here which is of note to us, but what is also of note to us is that we never saw where Venice was. I'm guessing they're somewhere in this cloud here. Doesn't matter too much, I'll explain why later, but we have found ruins, so that's good. Hopefully no one will snipe them off us immediately. Nope, too slow. What do we get? 40 faith, we found an ancient oracle. I will show you what this means next turn. We get to found a pantheon, and this is the first step towards religion. We have a lot of choices here as to what pantheon we could have. We could have culture bonuses, faith bonuses, food bonuses, production bonuses, happiness bonuses, more faith bonuses. There's a whole lot of bonuses. However, I usually end up picking the same ones. We're going to try and pick a different one this time. We're going to have Goddess of Festivals. It gives us one culture and one faith for each wine and incense we have. Notice how our tile yield has changed. Our incense that we were working before now earns us an extra faith and culture points respectively. This is important for later. In the top corner, in the top, near the middle, you can see that's where the faith stat is. We currently have 10 because we had um, 10 extra from our pantheon. We need 600 to get a great profit. That's how we create our religion. But we're not going to worry about that right now. How many turns do we have until writing? We have five turns until writing. So we're just going to kill time by start building a shrine. We're not going to build it all the way though. I will explain why momentarily. We do have another Barbarian encampment here though, and that is more relevant to us because it's quite near. But right this second right now, guess what? We're going to ignore it. <laughs> I bet you're massively surprised by that. Ooh, more Barbarians. This is very much a staple of early game in Civilization. Pretty much any game, but Civilization 5 specifically here. Barbarians. There are lots of them. This is not a surprise. We're going to keep researching the area though because we want to see where we could settle new cities if we were so inclined. Luckily, because we've looked at most of the map now, if for example Shaka Zulu found a new city anywhere on the map that we've already been, we will see where it is. This is good for keeping us in check with what the AI is up to. He who destroys a good book We now have writing. Itself. The reason this is important. We're going to stop building a shrine and change our production to the Great Library. 
It costs a lot of hammers, as you can see, 555. It provides culture, it provides science, it provides a great scientist point. I'll explain what that is uh, much further down the line because we don't need to know about it right now. It also produces a ca capability of two slots for great works of writing. That sounds very confusing, it's all about the culture victory. Let's talk about victories. Ways in which you can win Civilization 5. You can win via culture, like I've just mentioned. Can you see that briefcase at the top of the screen? That is what your culture stat is. At the moment it's zero. It tends to be zero for quite a while. If your culture becomes if your culture gets overtaken along with everybody else's culture from one Empire's tourism, they win a culture victory. If your tourism beats everybody else's culture, you win a culture based victory. It's very much as simple as that. This is the culture overview. We don't need to know from you, advisor. Here is the interesting slide, I suppose. Here are our opposition. Rome, the Zulus, Venice. We don't have any tourism, so our tourism is non-existent. However, we can see how much culture has been earned by other empires. As you can see, Rome has the most out of the rest of them as 224. As it happens, I've made 352. Once our tourism has passed all of these culture stats, we win culturally. That's how it would work. Now, there are other ways to win. Let's say you wanted to go for a science victory. We'll go to the tech tree to briefly explain it. Once you get a long way down the tech tree, you can build the Apollo project, or the Apollo program as it is called here. To win scientifically, you need to build a spaceship that's going to travel into outer space. It is as simple as that. Once all you, all the pieces have been built and put in your capital city, they are put together and launched off to space and then you win immediately. That may seem like a very easy option, but notice you need, for example, the SS engine. That is a long way down the tech tree. So that's the downside with science. The upside is that if you're in the lead scientifically, you don't have to worry really about anybody else winning scientifically. There are other ways to win. Notice how, for example, shaka has got his capital city here, Rulundi, and it belongs to him. If everybody's capital except your own is owned by a foreign power, let's say for sake of argument, I captured Shaka's capital. If Shaka had captured Rome, and Rome had captured Venice, I would win because I'm the only civilization left with their original capital. We're going to get aristocracy by the way because it means we can build the great library more quickly. This is a very very difficult uh, victory on occasions because if you lose your capital and everybody bar one has lost their capital as well you'll instantly lose even if you own 90% of the map. So you've got to be very careful to protect your capital sufficiently. There are other victories. The diplomatic victory. Each empire gets a certain number of votes. And if enough vote for you, you win. Incidentally, the Zulu have made a second city I'm not even going to begin to pronounce. But they have settled it here. If he had settled it right next to me, up here, obviously that would cause diplomatic problems. Therefore, war was more likely, etc, etc. To win diplomatically, you need to bribe people, generally speaking. And you can do that with money, usually. But um, liberating empires that have been destroyed is also a good way of going about that. There's another way of winning. You could win through time. We're playing a marathon game. That is genuinely what it's called. That means the game will last for 1,500 turns. If nobody's won... After 1,500 turns, the person with the highest score wins. And as you can see, the scoreboard is in the top right corner. To explain how score works, this is the breakdown. Cities, population, land, wonders, technologies, future tech, policies, great works and religion all contribute towards your score. So if, you, if no empire has won by the end of the game through any other means, the time victory automatically comes into effect. You can turn these different victories on and off at your leisure. 
I have them all on because I feel you get a better game knowing that anybody can win in any different way. That's just my personal preference. But anyway, let's get back to the game. We're not going to build lots of cities right now. We're much more focused on getting the Great Library. Unfortunately for us, our starting location does not provide us with a really nice hammer for production. Uh, a really nice tile for production. We have two hammer tiles, those hills, but that's about it. It's not very exciting. And as a result, we are working um, tiles which aren't brilliant, but they have to do the job. A tile that is quite nice, for example, is that silver. Sure, it only produces two hammers, but it also provides two gold. So that can be quite a nice option if we had had it. There actually aren't that many nice extra bonusy hill-based tiles for production around here by the looks of it. We have fish around us, we have some wheat, we have deer. It's not that exciting, is it, in terms of tile variety? It's all a bit beige. However, there's marble here, which is also a nice option that we have just spotted. Obviously, Warsaw cannot work that because it's not within three tiles. We're still being pestered by barbarians. We do not care. The most literate people, every now and again, somebody will make a great work. Uh, someone not related to the game, per se. Someone historic, historically speaking. In this case, it's a guy I actually don't know. This tells us how many technologies each empire has, and you can see that I'm bottom of the tree. That's not a surprise, but we do at least have mining now. Is there anything over here? No. The city of Warsaw can fire, and we have fired and defeated the Barbarian. We don't get any experience off doing it like that. Our units can be promoted, but only if they themselves do the combat, uh, rather than our city. Our city can't level up like that, for example. We're actually going to get to the stage now where we are going to try and take this encampment out. It will take a lot of effort, because we only have a very basic warrior. How does combat work in this game, you may be asking me. The warrior, as you may guess, is a direct combat melee unit. It attacks units one tile away. And we right click on it and boom. We did damage to them, but they actually did more damage to us. You may think that's a disaster, but it's okay. Because we can use fortify until healed and we will heal 10 HP every turn until we are maximized. We can choose to stop healing at any point we want. Venice has a pantheon. They have chosen God of the Open Sky. So that means every Pasha they have gets an extra culture point. But we're not bothered too much about that, to be honest. We actually really want a... What we want particularly is either the Zulu or Venice to be friendly towards us. Because we don't want to end up being in a war on two different fronts. Obviously that is a bad idea. Now we've done enough fighting to earn a unit promotion. We can either heal our unit instantly, which is a waste of a promotion. If you if you can get away with not doing it, don't click it. We can get Drill 1, which gives us a bonus in rough terrain. Or we can get Shock 1, which is a bonus in open terrain. We're going to go for that, because most of the terrain around us is plain. We've got some hills and we've got some forests, but generally speaking, we're better off doing that. Now we've got a tile that's opened up to us that we're going to switch to, so we're going to unlock the incense and lock in the wheat. We're sacrificing a faith and a culture, as well as two gold, for two food. That may seem a bit weird, because logically we want more. More food is more important to us right now though, trust me. Getting your population up quickly is very important. And they spawned a spear. The spear is stronger than the warrior. It is also a melee combat unit, and I am surprised, actually, that it didn't take me on. We're going to fortify. Fortifying gives you a bonus to your defence. So that if you get attacked, this warrior may only have a strength of 8, but it will go up if it gets attacked by the spear, or the warrior for that matter. However, if we were to attack, for example, the warrior right now, we would receive a 10% flanking bonus against us, because there are two friendly units side by side sandwiching me in and therefore we don't fight as well. 
I'll be honest, I was really hoping that the spear would attack us. Unfortunately, it's not playing ball, so we're going to move around and make this a bit more easy for us. As you may be unsurprised to hear, being on a hill gives you a defensive bonus. As you can see there, the spear would have a 25% terrain modifier. We're going to be sneaky though, and take the encampment out. We've dispersed the barbarians, and got 75 gold. If you were Germany, you might have ended up getting that unit for free as well. We're not though, so we didn't. Unfortunately now, the spear knows that it's stronger than us, therefore it will attack us. Therefore, we are going to run away a bit. Accepting embassies allows us to do more complicated di diplomacy later on. We could actually get that when we got writing. It just wasn't in our interest to do so. And I was wrong with regards to where Venice was. Here it is. It's actually not that great a starting location either. Rome now has a second city. It has Antium. Which is also not in a very good location. Rome's not too bad though. It's on a river. Rivers are nice. I'll, ex I'll explain why later. You London, we can't see very much of it, but it looks kind of okay-ish.